it's been called the gateway to the West. But now it's playing a central figure in the National League standings. The I-55 rivalry has been nothing less than spectacular. As a sea of blue and red have watched both teams fight till the very end. Today, Carlos looks to be a river bandit when he steamrolls the Redbirds. Next. River just keeps on rolling along, and so do the Chicago Cubs. They're playing great baseball on this road trip. They still lead the National League Central, and with a win today, they'd split a four-game series with the Cardinals in a very tough place to play. That, of course, Bush Stadium, another big crowd on hand for the series wrap-up this afternoon here on Fox Sports Net Chicago. Hello again, everybody, along with Steve Stone, Chip Carey. Great to be back with you for first place Chicago Cubs baseball. Steve, the Cubs gaining ground away from Wrigley Field, and that's always good news. When you take a look at the standings, you'll realize that in the last 10 games, nobody gained any ground on the Cubs. Take a look at Houston, St. Louis, Cincinnati. The Cubs have played better than all of them. And although this has been a chamber of horrors here in St. Louis, the Cubs still are five and two on the road trip. They're still gaining a little ground. And Chip, we're going off to Pittsburgh and Houston and Cincinnati are playing one another. St. Louis goes there after. This should be a good trip. So somebody's going to lose ground. Hopefully the Cubs will be gaining ground. And to do that, you've got to somehow muzzle Fernando Vina, the man at the top of the order. Somehow, some way, he has done most of his damage against this Cub pitching staff, including against Zambrano last time in Chicago. It was a grand slam home run. It just barely made it, but it certainly counted. And with seven of his 18 runs batted in against the Cubs, Vina did something in this ballpark he hasn't done, which is take a walk. So Zambrano will have to throw a little bit better. The Cubs will have to do to Matt Morris what they haven't done before, and that's hit him hard. Chip, some of the averages against Morris for the Cubs, pretty good. Including Corey Patterson, Steve, who's got a 10-game hitting streak for the Cubs. The young man really is figuring it out before our very eyes. He's turning into a star, in fact. And Corey Patterson, he stopped Joy and company, hope to beat up on Matt Morris in the series wrap-up in St. Louis. Starting lineups and more coming up next. Fox Sports Nets coverage of Chicago Cubs baseball is brought to you in part by Aflac. Ask about it at work. Chevy. Test drive a new Chevy car or truck today at your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealer. Comcast. Proud to be Chicagoland's new cable company. Heineken. It's all about the beer. Heineken. Walgreens. The pharmacy of the Chicago Cubs. Geico Direct. A 15-minute phone call could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Jack Daniels Tennessee Whiskey. Nobody makes whiskey like Jack Daniels. Pennzoil. Protection for the way you drive. Pennzoil. We're driving protection. Your local area Lexus dealer who invites you to test drive a Lexus today. Mike's Hard Lemonade. A hard Mike's is good to find. And by Southwest Airlines. More than 2,700 nonstop daily flights to 59 destinations all across the country. We are back in St. Louis. Big crowd filing in for the final game of this four-game set between the Cubs and the St. Louis Cardinals. Matt Morris is itching to go. He's 4-3 and three on the season. He climbs atop the bump. And uh, the Cub lineup will try to even things up. Here's the way Dusty lines them up today with Grudzalanek, Gonzalez, and Patterson hitting first, second, and third. Moise Salou, Troy O'Leary, and Hesop Choi the middle of the attack with Lenny Harris, Paul Bacco, and Carlos Soprano hitting seven, eight, and nine. First pitch of the afternoon, first pitch swinging, ground ball to short. It's a repeat performance. Cubs swung early and not too successfully in game three yesterday, Steve. Gary Matthews is hoping that the Cubs are a little more patient against Matt Morris. He has an excellent curveball. He usually uses the hard stuff first time through the order, and he does have terrific control. There are some guys in this lineup that have really hurt him, notably Alou, Grozelanek, who grounded out, Lenny Harris, and Corey Patterson. Gonzalez. One ball, no strikes. Alex with four homers, 13 driven in. Five hits and 29 tries away from Chicago on the trip. And the Cubs would dearly love to win this ball game. They're off to a good start on the trip. Yesterday was the halfway point. Dusty felt the club was a, a little bit road weary. Well, they're over the bump today, but a big, tall, strong right-hander opposing him in Matt Morris this afternoon. 
Matt Morris is their number one starter and what a big game for the Cubs to get. They would move six and two on the road trip. They would split the series here in St. Louis. Something they haven't done a lot of the last three years. There's the big breaking ball from Morris. And the count evens up two balls two strikes. Alex drives that one down the right field line and sure enough in his first at bat today he will see as many pitches as he saw all day yesterday. That shows a little more patience and during the daytime this is a good place to hit 330 down the lines 372 to the power alleys 402 to straightaway center field. Ground ball right to roll it. And Steve if you hit it on the ground you're hitting into the teeth of the best defense in the major leagues here in St. Louis. We'll take a look at the Cardinal defense and how they'll line up behind Matt Morris. It's Pujols, Edmonds, and Drew left to right with Roland Renteria, Vini, and Martinez in a great infield. Mike Matheny behind the plate. And the talented right-hander on the hill. These guys just don't make any execution mistakes. And a breaking ball for Patterson. Corey with a 10-game hit streak. Batting in the number three hole for the second consecutive game. Uh, Dusty Baker has said he'll hit third as long as the at-bats warrant that promotion to premier status in the lineup. Well, he's the leading RBI man on the club. And normally number three is your best hitter. Number four is your best RBI producer. With Sammy out of the lineup, Dusty has had to mix and match. There's a rocket shot hit deep to right field. Drew goes back. It's off the top of the wall. Drew plays it off his body. Patterson will stop at second. He missed the home run by a foot. An 11 game hitting streak for Patterson is a new career high. Corey Patterson loves to see Matt Morris go to the mound. One of the few guys that do. He's hitting 429 against him lifetime. He was bidding for his third home run and this one just missed. No chance at all for J.D. Drew. He goes back as far as he can go. He lets the ball get by him, but Corey can't take advantage of it. Drew gets to it quickly. He's got a very good arm, and the Cubs trying to push across a run here in the first inning. Moises Alou has also done a very good job against Matt Morris. Five homers and 26 knocked in for him, and a breaking ball in the first pitch. Crowd to Davinia. Cubs impatient in the first. Get a two-out double and nothing else. Sombrano to the mound here in St. Louis. No score after a half inning. Here's the way the Cardinals line up for Tony La Russa. St. Louis enters play today. Three games behind the Cubs in the Central. Fernando Vina has really hurt the Cubs. He's their spark plug. Then it's Drew, Pujols, and Edmonds in center. Scott Rowland in third base. Edgar Renteria just one hit in the series as a shortstop. Tino Martinez, Mike Matheny, and Matt Morris hits ninth. There's a look at Zambrano, who is bidding for his fifth win, and this is his ninth start. He's been pretty tough, but if he has some problems, it's early, and it's usually control. And against this club, if you put them on base, they got some guys in the middle who'll knock them in. Pena, a very poor on-base percentage for a leadoff man. He's walked only four times this year. In fact, Steve, he's been hit twice as many times as he's taken the free pass. Well, unfortunately, yesterday was one of the times he did walk, and it came in the seventh inning leading off. Cruz walked him and he scored what turned out to be the winning run. He's hitting 245 on the season as you see. And Zambrano pumps over a quick strike. Carlos has not fared well in his career against St. Louis. In fact, in 12 and two thirds career innings, he's given up 12 runs. Vina bunts it right back to the mound and an easy out. Vina does not bunt successfully too frequently. And you get him out, that's a good start. Here's a look at the rest of the Cub defense. We'll see how they line up behind Carlos Zambrano. And it goes a Lou Patterson and O'Leary left to right with Harris. Gonzalez, Cresolanic, and Choi. Paul Baco behind the plate. And sinker balling Carlos Zambrano on the hill. So an easy way to retire Vigna, who tried to push it by Zambrano, but couldn't do it. Here's J.D. Drew. That ball inside the bag, fair down the right field line. 
O'Leary in the corner expected a tricky bounce, didn't get it, and drew into second. With his third hit of the series, remember he had a 514-foot home run off the Jumbotron scoreboard in right center field on Friday. J.D. Drew takes the first ball and takes it right down the line. The only thing O'Leary can do is wait for it to come out. Drew with pretty good speed winds up at second. So for J.D. Drew, that's double number three. And now you have to worry about two of the guys that have given him some problems. Pujols and Renteria have really hurt Zambrano. Pujols first to face him. He's four for ten against Carlos Lifetime. And a nice stop by Paco saves the base. One ball, no strikes. We've got a couple of doubles in this game already. One from Drew. One from Patterson. And despite the hot, muggy weather, this place plays a whole lot friendlier for the offense in the daytime. One ball, no strikes. That's over but low. 2 and 0, oh, your count. Cubs would love to see Zambrano work a low pitch count first inning. When he has struggled, you've mentioned it has been early, and he's fallen behind early. Don't want to fall behind these guys with Morris on the mound. Well, he's done it, and let's hope that Pujols doesn't make him pay the price. Three balls, no strikes. Now Baco out. I think they were crossed up. Well, I also think he's going to tell him that Pujols is one of those guys, a lot like Sammy Sosa, that usually is given the 3-0 green light. expecting anything but that but fortunately all Baco able to keep it in front of him he was sitting low and away he wanted the slider instead it looked like he got the split finger fastball three balls no strikes dangerous pitch when Baco caught Zambrano in Milwaukee Carlos wanted to throw the split finger and he wanted to throw the slider and Banco said, look, your sinker is so good. Just keep going with that. And let's see if they can hit you. They did. He took it through the eighth inning. Three balls, one strike. Fly ball, center field. Patterson will drift back. Drew at second base. Thinks about a tag. Corey to catch. Drew goes halfway. Good throw from Patterson. Two out. Actually, what you'd like to do is get that one a little bit lower because Drew took two steps. He wasn't running, so you don't want to airmail the cutoff, man. It was on target, but it wound up short hopping Lenny Harris. Now, Patterson can see that Drew is going to stop. You see him airmail Alex and a good play by Lenny Harris. So now you're one out away from getting out of this first inning and chip in this series. The Cubs have really handled it. But He's only one for 11. And the Cubs are catching him at the right time. The Reds held him to one for 11 in their series. So the St. Louis center fielder has seen that batting average drop nearly 100 points. That is a precipitous drop. And he's been swinging at pitches up and away from him. That's the way you get him out. Well, Zambrano went up and in. Another good spot to throw him. With an uppercut swing, Jim Edmonds has always had trouble getting on top of any high fastball. Hopefully that'll be the case today. Only problem, is three. Three. Only problem Edmund's strength is also Zambrano's strength. He loves the ball down. And when you're a hard sinker ball pitcher, that's where you throw your best sinker. That's a split finger grip. Let's see if he throws it with one strike and drew it second. Out of play for strike two. We'd like, we'd like to welcome our affiliate Charter Communications and the viewers in Westville, Illinois. To Bush Stadium in St. Louis. Scoreless game in the first. Well, this is where you go and get them out, out of the strike zone. And the best place to do it is a face-high fastball. You can throw it in or out, and you can get them. Edmonds has really been anxious. He knows he's struggling, and he's really expanded the strike zone. Let's see if Baco gives him a high target. They're going away with two strikes. And it just missed. One ball, two strikes. A little bit higher, it'll look more inviting. One year ago today, Jim Edmonds was very similar to what he's doing now. Roland waits on deck. 
Drew a lead at second. And Evans takes ball two in the dirt. And Baco another nice stop. We've seen very good work by Matheny, Miller, and Baco in this series defensively. I would say we're in the fourth game now of this series. This has been a catching clinic. When you look at the three guys who have done the bulk of the catching in this series and you see what they do to block low pitches to settle down their pitchers to throw to the bases. It's just been terrific. There's a lot of catching folks out there you know. Little ground ball to short. Low throw but Troy digs it out and the side is retired. I'm tempted to respond but I won't. On we go to the second inning a scoreless game in St. Louis. A scoreless first here in St. Louis and on this most momentum of days the Cubs are momentous of days I should say we uh, finish up our series with the Cardinals but we also Steve celebrate a very important milestone John McDonough celebrating his 50th birthday today in honor of John we've crumpled the drop in <laughs> well I understand that John since he is now on the the back nine of life. He's on the downward slide. As yeah, so O'Leary digs in, has decided to celebrate his birthday by not only providing us with state of the art chair technology, but with automobile clothing and dining deals in Chicago. Well, there's a method to his madness, Chip, and he's figured out at 50 that it is better to give than receive. We applaud him, this wonderful gesture. So you folks in the marketing department back at Wrigley Field, your checks in the mail. Bounce back to Matt Morris. And there's your first out. O'Leary is retired here in the top of the second inning. So you mean you don't have your car deal yet, huh? Yeah, not quite yet, but we did talk to the radio crew about chipping in a hundred or so dollars to be able to get John a very extensive gift. They said there was no way in the world they were even giving as much as 50 cents, which surprised me. Well, that's, that's generous true. guy. High pop up out of play. Yeah, Pat Ronnie just said, the heck with John. They don't need John. They're, they, they feel that they are bigger than any one marketing department. And that there's no question. I mean, Ron owes that, whatever you call that shirt to the marketing department. I kind of like the shirt. I gotta admit, no balls, two strikes to Hesop Choi. I think. Well, they're gonna be watering the plants today because it is very humid it here. Is in St. Louis. A hot one. Choi fouls it away and stays alive. I think that another thing John could do for his birthday. The radio guys need a dental floss sponsor. Very possible. Down on strikes is Troy. The breaking ball starting to cause him a few problems on the road trip. Two up, two down in the second. Matt Morris is really a terrific pitcher. And he's not the number one starter here in St. Louis for nothing. Take a look at this breaking ball. Over the top curve, he saw Choi has very little of any chance. And Morris for his 10th start of the year with an ERA below three. Lenny Harris had good luck against Morris in his career. Seven hits and 15 tries. Cubs got a scare yesterday, Steve, when he was thrown out at first base. Thought he might have come up a little lame, but apparently not a hamstring or muscle injury. Well, he just stepped on the first baseman's foot. You see that in basketball a lot, where you just roll over the ankle. And fortunately, nothing wrong with Lenny. And he's had great numbers against Matt Morris. That's one of the reasons he's in the lineup. One ball, two strikes. Morris to work again with the bases clear. And boys, on a hot, muggy day in St. Louis and getaway day for everybody, you better be up there swinging the bat today. Well, Morris is always around the plate. The reason why he pushed Harris back was you can pretty much figure out that he's going to throw a breaking ball next. He did, and Harris beats it into the ground to second. Vina handles easily, and the Cubs are down in order in the second. Happy birthday, John McDonough. Let's see if the Cubs can eke out a win on your happy day in St. Louis. 
Introducing 54321, 2 the only show taking you inside the world of extreme sports every weeknight with breaking news, event highlights, and insider features you won't find anyplace else. 54321 comes up today at 5.30 only on Fox Sports Net. The hottest guy in this lineup is the guy standing at the plate, Scott Rowland. Hit a two-run homer against Alfonseca yesterday, and he's been tearing it up the last two weeks. What a deal that brought him from Philadelphia. Placido Polanco was the principal in that deal. Bud Smith and Mike Timlin also involved, and it's been Polanco who's been the, the key piece for Philadelphia. And the way they had to look at it, they weren't going to resign him. They had to get something for him, and they got a real good player in Polanco. They gave up a terrific player in Roland who can defend with the best, drive in runs, and hit for average. A 12-game hitting streak for the Cardinal third baseman. That's rolled toward Harris at third. Long throw across the diamond, and he got his man by a step. There's one of the advantages that he sub Choi gives you. First of all, he's 6'5", and he understands what to do around the bag, but also he can stretch, and he's very limber to all directions. This is not an easy play. And Choi takes this throw into the runner. Lenny Harris guns it across, and he up. We've seen continually stretch out in the direction of the throw, and we've seen him pick balls out of the dirt with anybody in this league. Very solid, fundamental, defensive player is he up Choi, and with no disrespect to Fred McGriff, who's in the twilight of his career, defensively certainly, Choi a big upgrade over there for the Cubs this season. Here's Renteria, 348 his average. Cubs again have held him down. Just one hit in the series for Renteria. And Choi, a product of the Cubs system, and folks get used to it. You'll be seeing that a lot more. There's nine guys in uniform right now that are products of the Chicago Cubs system. And in the next few years, you're going to see a 25-man roster primarily built from the Cubs farm system with a few pieces added here and there. Driven foul, one ball, two strikes to Renteria. Well, hopefully he can control Renteria. That's something he hasn't been able to do. And with two strikes, Renteria this year, although those are decent numbers, not as good as they've been in years past. Overall, he's had another all-star season. Driven in the air to right. O'Leary had him played well. He's in the corner. Can Troy make a play? It's a foul ball, and he did catch it. O'Leary out of our line of sight, makes the grab in the corner, and there's out number two. That was a great play by Troy O'Leary. It's tough to keep your concentration as you go over by the padding. And the umpire is checking to see if he might have trapped it against the wall. That's Chuck Merriweather who went down the line with him. And that's a tough man retired. Good play by O'Leary. Watch it again. Merriweather's down there to see if he traps it. He just catches it and then hits the wall. So Tino Martinez the batter he's hit two home runs he's knocked in 10. He's hitting in the number seven spot in the order Cardinals a little concerned about Tino's lack of run production. This is his second full season in the National League. To a certain degree they gave him the benefit of the doubt learning a new league after spending so many years in Seattle and then of course the World Series runs with the Yankees. They need him to hit as well as play terrific defense at first base. He's done the latter. They want him to start to hit a little better, though. And that'll have to wait. Sombrano blows him away. Three up, three down in the second. And Carlos will hit second in our third. Handle people to handle players, which is what it's all about. You have 25 people in that dugout with different... Um, uh, you know, playing ability with different talents, with different economic status. Uh, it's not an easy job anymore to manage in the major leagues. Uh, not that it ever was easy, but it's harder today. We expect a lot more of a manager now than we used to. And I would say Dusty Baker has more than delivered. Not only is he the manager of the team, he's kind of the father confessor for a lot of younger players. And as he was demonstrating, an outstanding hitting guru as well. well. Dusty was one of the best hitting coaches in baseball after he retired from a long illustrious career. Baco grounds it through the right side. There's the second Cub hit and it gives Zimbrano a chance now to move him along with a sacrifice. You know Chip it's real easy to look at Dusty Baker and Jim Henry and see the finished products of a long way up. Both of these guys came up the hard way. Dusty was in the Marines and 
Jim Henry battled his way through some problems early and they both attained a status in life maybe they didn't dream about but one thing they have in common is their ability to make guys below them number one know they appreciate their efforts and number two they both like and respect him that's a difficult combination to achieve Zimbrano takes the breaking ball for a high strike it's on one to Carlos Jim Henry on the trip he will not be accompanying us to Pittsburgh however feeling that his work is done for the time being don't forget the draft is coming Poor fun attempt from Carlos that time. Nothing in two year count. This is a big situation in this game. The way he's throwing and the way Morris is tossing it to the Cardinals. An early run would look very big. You've got to get Baco to second base here. And you have to be able to lay down the butt when called upon. And you would think that even with two strikes, they would do it. Pitchers like to throw breaking balls in this situation, trying to get the foul. And that's exactly what they got. Carlos strikes out on three pitches. Poor at bat. Baco's at first now with one out the top of the order comes up. It's real tough to bunt that ball especially when it's breaking low and in Morris has been around a long time and the combination of Morris and the Feeney understands what you do here you break that ball inside and more times than not the pitcher will foul it off that's exactly what happened and that's a strikeout. So back to the top Grunzelanek Mark swung at the first pitch and rolled out to the shortstop to open up our ball game. You could go to the hit and run somewhere early in the count with this combination. Baco does run well despite the position he plays. Now, I would think that <laughs> with the inability to get him over to second base and Mark Rezolanik may be a little anxious if you get him concentrating on right field and Chip he's been pulling most everything in this series. Hit and run would look pretty good. Breaking ball in for a strike. Want to welcome our fine service men and women from across the globe to our telecast this afternoon Armed Forces Network is carrying our broadcast from St. Louis Steve Stone Chip Carey from Bush Stadium. Round ball to Roland one hop to second on the first Vina gets rid of it double play and the side retired the inability to bunt cost the Cubs in the third inning and Morris will come to the plate in a scoreless game. ShopCubs.com for the broadest selection of Cubs merchandise. Cubs.com, the official site of wearing your heart on your sleeve, cap pullover, and a whole lot more. Good seats available for the upcoming home stands, with one notable exception that Yankee series might be tough to get choice seats. Might be a little crowded, and likewise the White Sox, but you can still get the occasional seat. And with the Cubs coming off the road from this extended trip, it'll be good for us and everybody to get back to the friendly confines and we're there for quite some time so come out and see what's become a pretty exciting baseball team. Mike Matheny to work in the St. Louis third inning. We talked about Zambrano's difficulties in the first. He has not had them today. And he's run into Matt Morris for the second time in three starts. He's matching him zero for zero to this point. Only one hit for the Cardinals, two for the Cubs, nothing, nothing score. And one advantage for the Cardinals, Matt Morris, a lot like Mark Pryor, can really hit and really handle the bat. So that gives them another offensive force in the lineup. So here's the key man in the inning. Get Matheny and don't give Morris a chance. It won't happen. Matheny up the middle, leads off the third with a solid single. And Morris, let's see if they're bunting with him. He's sacrificed three times. Well, Tony La Russa knows that this is probably going to be a pretty tough ball game. But just because Morris squares away, the Cardinals work on this all the time. They put the bat out like they're going to bunt, then they pull it back and take a swing. So you still have to come in at the corners, but Lenny Harris has got to beware if Morris does pull the bat back. Morris normally a very good butter. And he gets it down. Zambrano thinks second and throws it away. Bad decision for Zambrano. Bad result. That's 12 errors by the pitching staff. They made 13 in total in 162 games last year. We've talked about it a lot. It proves to be disastrous here in the third inning. Take the out when they give you the out. This play was going to be too close at second base anyway. It's a slowly bunted ball. A very bad throw. There's no chance at all at second when you see where this throw goes. 
into center field. And Chip, we've said it over again and over again. Against a real good team, you can't open the door. If you give them more than three outs, they're probably going to come back and beat you. And this Cub team has just been atrocious as far as the pitching staff is concerned, fielding and throwing the baseball. That is our guy call moment. Dusty Baker lamenting his pitching staff's decision making when handling the baseball. And we've seen it in this series. The one game where the Cubs played nearly flawlessly defensively was the prior game. They won it two to one. In the other two games of the series, the pitchers have had problems. A little ground ball to second, one there. Two to first. Vina drives home with Feeney. It's one nothing St. Louis. Cubs turn two. That's what you have to do in that situation. You have to stay out of the big inning. And just like the Cardinals did in their top of the third inning, in the bottom of the third, the Cubs on defense turn the double play when they have to. However, once again, the air comes back to hurt. It's still only one run. And you get out of this inning with one run, you consider yourself fortunate. Drew, though, the man that doubled last time up, wax that one foul for a strike. The Cubs are trying to do something they haven't done since 1973, and that's win nine games on a road trip. They're five and two already. From June 16th through June 26th, they were able to win on a trip nine games. And the reason why I mentioned 1973 so prominently, they were getting ready to trade Ron Santo to the White Sox. And I came over to the Cubs, along with three other guys. But we all liked it a little bit better on the north side. Well, and, as you've always and said, Ronnie was, thrived on the south side, well, as we know. And you've said it was a trade that hurt both teams. <laughs> exactly. Foul right. away, two balls, two strikes. Well, it pretty much ended Ronnie's career, and I became a 20-game winner. But it took me three seasons to do it. And there is a look at the coach. Very much into this one because he's still talking with his hands. Question is, does Ronnie know what his hands are saying? One nothing St. Louis here in the bottom half of the third. I'll feel straight away and very deep. We've already seen Drew hit the daylights out of one. If the Cubs could play him off the right center field scoreboard, they'd consider it. That's where he hit a ball on Friday. And Zambrano walks him in front of Pujols. That's not a good idea. Pujols flied out his first time. There's a lot of people that figure that. One of the strengths of the Cardinals is offense, which it certainly is, and that's why when looking for some help, especially pitching help, they would consider trading J.D. Drew. He's had a lot of physical problems. He's had a lot of leg problems. And so although Drew is very talented, he would be a guy you'd look for to get a closer. The problem is they have no money, nothing, not a Zippo. No, you have to make a, you have to make a deal that is a sum zero trade where it evens out. One ball, no strikes. Drew a lead at first. High and tight to Pujols. Ball two. One nothing St. Louis. Lead off single from Matheny. Morris putted. Zambrano threw it in the center field. The runners at the corners. Vina hit into a double play to score Matheny. No RBI on the play. And then Drew walked and Pujols ahead 2-0. Cardinals head down to Houston next. The Cubs head up to Pittsburgh. Three game set starts tomorrow night. Two balls and a strike. Very big advantage for the Cubs if they can take advantage of the Pittsburgh Pirates. A place that they'd much rather see than the old ballpark, which was for the Cubs a proposition where you'd win a third of the time. The new ballpark, the Cubs have fared very well against the banged up Pittsburgh team. Who's played terrible baseball at home. Two balls and a strike. Pujols chops it up the middle. Grunzelotic will take it himself. Almost was beaten by Drew. Nonchalant play, but it works out all right. One run on a double play and an E1. St. Louis one, Cubs nothing, heading to the fourth. Tonight, Maglio Ordonez and the White Sox welcome Carlos Delgado and the Blue Jays to U.S. Cellular Field. Coverage starts with the White Sox pre. 
It's the White Sox and the Blue Jays tonight at 6.30 on Fox Sports Net. White Sox will have a new hitting coach, and they're hoping that that turns things around for them. They have struggled offensively, but still, with all the problems they've had, they're just five games back. And Minnesota got off to a slow start. It's starting to do what everybody thought they would do. So the Sox have got to heat it up. Well, they've chased down Kansas City. Has Minnesota. They lead them by a half. White Sox are five games back. Three games under 500. A lot of time left for the Southsiders, and they are a better team than they've shown in the first seven weeks of the season, one would think. And strike three right down the middle takes care of Gonzalez. Third punch out for Morris, who has a one-run lead. Well, we want to put the Cubs' struggles somewhat defensively into context. There's some very difficult positions to play out there. We know how tough it is to catch. Shortstop and third base without question is difficult. Painting the outside corner with a fastball is certainly hard enough. This entire St. Louis team has made 15 errors. The whole team. The Cubs' pitching staff has made 12. Now, if you subtract 10 of those errors, the Cubs would be a middle of the road defensive team as it is their second from the bottom and Larry Rothschild is more frustrated than anybody about the fact that his pitchers can't feel and he can say all he wants about pitchers fielding practice or as Dusty said working on guys being patient this is a game of harsh cold realities you win games you lose games it's not a matter of how hard you try you've got to get it done. And this team is still in first place by two and a half games. But in order to take advantage of this superlative pitching, they've got to tighten it up defensively. If they can do that, this team can be in the race the entire way with what they have right now, getting back Sammy Sosa. And whether they make a trade or not for somebody at third base, that remains to be seen. They're good enough to compete with what they have. That's if they tighten up the defense. I think they can do it, Chip, because the other part of the defense the guys that are the seven guys behind the pitcher are doing by and large a pretty good job especially on this road trip. One ball two strikes to Corey Patterson who missed a home run by a, a foot in right field his first time up. It's two and two. Corey's getting tougher to pitch to because he's laying off that breaking ball in the dirt if he lays off that pitch and makes you bring it up. He also can hit the high fastball if you don't throw it face high. And he's fouling off the tougher pitches like that rather than missing them. Well, that's the maturation process. You start to spoil real good pitches, and eventually the more pitches you see in an at bat, the more chance that guy on the mound has to make a mistake. And Corey is enormously strong. Two balls, two strikes. That time he went fishing. Morris hit the glove of Matheny. And that's four strikeouts, two in a row here in the fourth inning. Uh, Mike Moises alluded to take at least one pitch. Yesterday he was retired on a hanging breaking ball. And today, the first time up, he was retired on a hanging breaking ball with Patterson in scoring position. Now Moises likes to hit the first pitch. But when he's right, he'll look at a pitcher too. No balls and a strike to Alou. One nothing St. Louis. This Cardinal team second behind Atlanta in offense. They are first in defense. And the pitching isn't bad. They're fifth in the National League in pitching. The Cubs have the second best pitching and that's one of the reasons why they have a two and a half game lead. Fly ball center field but Edmonds should track that down shy at a track and that'll retire the side three up three down in our fourth inning Cardinals back to work leading by a run. It's one nothing St. Louis as we look at our always entertaining athletic trivia question why did Phillies owner Bob Carpenter apologize to his second baseman Granny Hammer on this date in 1954. I think it might have been Hamner, but I'm not sure. We'll have to check that out. But why did he apologize? It's very simple, and we will get to that in a moment. Here's Edmonds. He looks at the ball low. Edmonds grounded out his first time up. I think it was over chairs in the locker room, Chip. He did not get him the new chairs, and he said, I'm sorry. That's going to be rectified. 
Did he go to the Granny no. Hamner? He, he, he went to the second baseman chair store, which was just down the road in those days in Philadelphia. Now, I don't know if that's the answer. I'm just guessing, but we'll see. His son, you know, went on to become MC Hammer. I'm not sure if you know and that. And his grandfather, I think, was Armin Hammer. Very wealthy industrialist. Two balls and a strike to Jim Edmonds. Cubs are catching him at a real good time. He's not seeing the baseball too well. Problem is, the Cubs keep throwing the ball all over the diamond and giving the Cardinals unearned runs. Well, he's asking Tim Welke if that was a strike. And I'm sure Welke is saying it was. That was a pretty good pitch. Edmonds mopes about every called strike. It's almost an, in, an affront to him if it's called, and he doesn't offer at it. Three balls, two strikes. Well, he has that philosophy, and I've been watching some of the NBA playoffs where you know how nobody ever makes a foul? It's the same thing with strikes on Jim Edmonds. But if he keeps it up and away, he'll get him. He spoiled a good pitch. Three balls, two strikes as we approach 1 o'clock here in St. Louis. When you see Paul Bacco putting one finger down and then moving it around, that's for the sinker. And he does that a lot with Zambrano. We'll take a look in at Bacco, who's done a real good job behind the plate, does have a base hit today. And watch it again. There's the sinker. But Carlos wants the fastball away, and Baco said, Look, let's try this again. Out of play down the left field line. Has your curiosity been piqued as to why the Phillies owner apologized to his second baseman? I'm on the edge of my seat. I sense that. It's a very, very curious Aflac trivia question. What with on this date 41 years ago, Stan Musial picked up his 3,516th career hit, trailing only Ty Cobb. A high fly ball got under it into right center field. Patterson is there. And Edmonds is retired. So let's take a look at the answer. The owner had his second baseman, followed by a detective. He suspected the players were not ready to play mentally or physically. The Phillies in 1954 on this date were just a, a game out of first place. Startling, huh? What the relevance to this game is, I'm not quite sure, but that is our Aflac trivia question today. Here's Roland. One ball, no strikes. He grounded out his first time up. Off his thumb, shallow right. Out goes Choi. In comes O'Leary. And not surprisingly, Bob Albrecht made the call on that particular Aflac question. Two balls and a strike. When this at bat started, Corey Patterson was playing a couple of steps into right center field. Now he shifted it straight away. It's a good thing. 13 game hitting streak for Roland. That's one shy of his career high. Scott Roland can run. Last year he wasn't called upon to run too much. He stole just eight bases. Tony La Russa does not let anybody on this team run on their own. And occasionally Roland would like to do that because he's got pretty good anticipation. But with the Thunder in the middle of this lineup, La Russa doesn't like to run very much. Just 12 steals this year. And I guess when you've been thrown out 11 times, maybe your team is telling you they're not, not pretty good at it. And with all the offense they have, why run yourself unnecessarily out of an inning? They did that against Mark Pryor the other day, you recall. Renteria looks at a fastball high. Four ball one. Every time you come to St. Louis, you see a celebration of our nation's pastime. Same story at Wrigley Field, obviously, but the Stan Musial statue outside, the retired numbers of Ozzie Smith, Red Shane Deanst. Enos Slaughter, Ken Boyer, 
Dizzy Dean, Lou Brock, Bob Gibson. No number for Rogers Hornsby. The Cardinals didn't wear numbers when he was a major league performer. And Musial, of course. Now you've got Renteria at that. He's done a lot of things well, but he has grounded into five double plays. He does hit the ball to right and right center field, and this is a good hit and run situation. Runner not going. The pitch line into center field. Rolling into second base. Patterson plays it quickly on a hop. Two on, one out for Tino Martinez. And here's the situation. Cardinal fans have been waiting for him to improve upon his 10 RBI total. He's also grounded into a pretty high total. Four double plays so far. And Renteria has always hit Zambrano, so that line drive was no surprise. Double steal, ground ball to the right side. And Choi will step on the bag for out number two. So it gives Matheny a chance with two outs. Zambrano never looked at Roland. It's a good thing that Martinez hit the ball because there was no way to get anybody out. Watch the runners go. They've got four steps before Zambrano threw the ball. This is something you just can't do. You have to make sure that the runners stop. Now Larry Rothschild's coming out saying, look, you've got Matheny up. You've got Morris on deck. He's a good hitting pitcher, but even the best of the hitting pitchers probably are not as good as an everyday player, especially one hitting over 275. So be careful with him. But Chip, you know, you have to help yourself on the mound. He didn't make a particularly good throw earlier, but also when you go into a stretch, knowing you need to double play, you have to make sure that the base runners are stopped. That time they weren't, but fortunately for the Cubs, it was a hit and run. Otherwise, they would have stolen two bases and wouldn't have had to give up an out. I think they're just going to walk him. Well, he's no Granny Hamner up there. You got to be careful with Mike Matheny. So that'll load him up. Two walks in the game for Zambrano here in the fourth. One nothing St. Louis and Morris a chance to. Add to the St. Louis lead. This will become the biggest sequence for Carlos Zambrano. Number one, he's facing a pretty good baseball team in the Cardinals. And two, he's facing their number one starter, Matt Morris. And I'm not talking about pitcher to hitter. I'm talking about on the hill where the Cubs have done very little with Morris. It's a one run game. In order to keep it there, you have to retire Morris. Zambrano does not have a wild pitch this year. That's a testament to both Miller and Baco digging that sinker out of the dirt. But Morris hitting a fairly robust 250. No place to put him. And an inauspicious start. Ball one to the pitcher. Unfortunately, Chip, many times after the intentional walk, you see an unintentional walk, and that's the career of Morris, who's doing much better this year. Well, you definitely don't want to get to Vina. Seven of his 18 RBIs have come against the Cubs, and he's the man on deck. 2-0. Oh. Morris digs in. Took a little off and got it over. Well, I would be careful on this one. I wouldn't take anything off to get it over. Throw that good hard sinker. Now he's got him set up. Nice rally from Carlos. Two balls, two strikes. Biggest pitch of the inning right here because you don't want to allow these guys a running start, which they'll get on three and two. If he hits it in the infield, you still have a force at any base if you make it happen on 2 2. Pretty good cut. Well, for Zambrano, this is an at bat that could very well determine the outcome of his and the Cubs' day. So 
they will be running now, three and two. Roland, Renteria, and Matheny in a one-nothing Cardinal game. He got it. Big pitch for Zambrano, and the Cubs fans cheer. Morris wants to know if it was a strike. It was. O'Leary, Choi, and Harris are coming up. Cardinals lead by a run. Gail Fisher inside the Fox Sports Net studios with this Pontiac in-game update. The White Sox make a big change. They fire hitting coach Gary Ward. Ward spent the last two years working with Sox hitters, but after the Sox got swept by the Twins over the weekend, general manager Kenny Williams felt it was time for a change. And Greg Walker, the hitting coach from AAA Charlotte, has been named as Ward's replacement. Chip and Steve, I don't know. The Sox, when things go bad, they seem to blame the hitting coach. Well, somebody's got to pay, I guess. But uh, certainly things have not gone as expected on the south side, and a lot of folks have been speculating in Chicago about a shakeup of some sort with regards to that White Sox team. Kenny Williams continues to maintain that Jerry Manuel is going to be his manager at the end of this season. He's a good baseball man. And, Steve, we talked about it earlier today. If that team has too much talent to be playing as poorly as they have been playing, what do you think? Well, they're third from the bottom offensively, and maybe that's why the change was made. And you're right, they do have more talent than they've shown, and they better show it quickly because Minnesota is starting to heat it up. And that is the favorite to win the division as Kansas City falls out of it. Troy O'Leary down two quick strikes here in our Toyota fan of the game inning. David Hill from Portage, Indiana is our contestant. If the Cubs score in the fifth, David wins a Fox Sports Net prize package, including a hat and a t-shirt one away as O'Leary rolls out against Matt Morris unfortunately when you hit it on the ground here in St. Louis you're going to be out and that's what the Cubs have been doing and credit Matt Morris with keeping everything down and keeping the Cubs off balance three ground balls in the first inning two in the second a double play ground ball in the third and a ground ball to lead off the fifth brings up he stopped Choi and he takes strike one he struck out swinging in the middle of the second inning one to nothing Cardinals and you're seeing master craftsman on the hill for the Cardinals Morris strike one strike two on just about everybody he knows how big this game is for St. Louis too they can take three out of four on their home turf they'll gladly do it against the first place Cubs and pick up some ground, get back in the race, a race they know they're going to be in all season. The only question is, when is Isringhausen coming back? He's starting to throw off the mound. They think now early June, but he's been gone a long time. I would think that would be overly optimistic. Air Choi out of the strike zone. Yet it's the breaking ball that's mesmerized him. Two up, two down in the fifth. Can't do anything about yesterday. But the Cubs knew yesterday was a big game because of the man that was going to the mound today. This is the Cardinals number one against the Cubs number five. At home, a quality team is supposed to win that matchup. Doesn't always work out, but that's what the Cubs face today, trying to salvage a split in this series. And when you think back to the Cubs, tying the score after seven yesterday with a golden opportunity to take the first two out of three, you realize how important that was. And Morris pitching a little angry, too. The Reds beat him here in his last start. So he's trying to win number five, as is Zambrano. One and one to Harris. And Lenny looks at that one off the plate. Cubs got some good news today. Dave Veers is with the Iowa Cubs. He's throwing the ball at Colorado Springs tonight. He'll begin a rehab stint, trying to recover for, from some tendonitis. And Harris down the right field line. Grass slows that down, and Lenny on his way to second. Drew spins, fires, and is off target. It's two-out double for Harris, his second one of those on the year. And Paul Bacco a chance now to tie it up. One of the reasons why Lenny Harris is in the lineup today is the fact that he's always hit more as well. I would be surprised if they gave Bacco anything here. Harris gets a changeup, takes it right down the line. Past Tino Martinez, something that's been tough to do. And with the play in front of him, beats a very good arm in J.D. Drew. 
I'm not saying they'll intentionally walk Baco, but you can bet that Morris is going to be careful with him. He's singled in the third. Here's Baco. One ball, one strike. We've sent our ace statistical representative Joe Corneo in search of uh, an interesting statistic in this series not counting Saturday's game the Cubs have just five innings Steve with more than one hit tough to string together any kind of offense when that's pitching you're facing well that's what's been surprising for the Cardinals this year they knew that Williams and Morris would be pretty good they're getting a lot of production out of three four five. Baco single passed first his first time up and now faces an even count with Harris in scoring position. Paul I'm not too sure about that call. He thought that ball was inside. Welke giving Morris the benefit of the doubt. You would think he would see a breaking ball here. He did and he beats it into the ground and it's foul by a foot. They'd love to get Baco here. And force the Cubs to send Zambrano to the plate leading off the sixth inning. You can bet if he does get Baco, it's going to be on one of the corners. He's not going to use much of the plate to get it. He doesn't mind throwing it inside off the plate, maybe getting the benefit of the call. Or try that backdoor breaking ball, which is a curveball that he throws outside, hoping the hitter gives up on it and snap it over the outside corner. He's going in. See if he can crowd it. Nearly hit him. That'll set up the outside corner, perhaps full count. Two outs, Harris tying run at second base here at the top of the fifth. Zambrano and Morris on a humid Monday afternoon at Bush Stadium. You would think that he would go with a breaking ball here. If he walks him, he walks it. He did. Beaten toward Vigna at second. Sunday hop on a Monday afternoon. And the side is retired. No runs, one hit, one left. Morris protecting a one-run lead at home. Chicago Cubs baseball is brought to you in part by Toyota. Get the feeling. Corona Extra. Miles away from the ordinary. And by your Chicagoland Ford stores. If you haven't looked at Ford lately, look again. Weeknights, your exclusive all-access garage pass returns with Totally NASCAR on Fox Sports Net. Totally NASCAR is your place to turn all season long for the latest news, highlights, and information on the NASCAR Winston Cup Series. Totally NASCAR airs tonight at 6 only on Fox Sports Net. The Cardinals would like Vigna to start walking more, and to do that, you have to take pitches, something that he does begrudgingly. He's walked one time in this ballpark all year. Unfortunately, it was yesterday's game. Little ground ball to Choi. Vina, easy out. I'm not thinking you're going to walk much by swinging at the first pitch all the time. Cubs are happy that he did it on getaway day. And J.D. drew the batter. He's doubled, walked, and been forced. Sombrano will lead off for the Cubs in the sixth inning. And because of that, they're watching his pitch count. But the pitch count has been pretty good so far. He had a tough time last inning, but he got out of it with a big pitch to Morris. He's throwing well today. But one throw he wishes he hadn't made has pretty much decided the affair so far and a throwing air in the third when the Cardinals were giving the Cubs an out popped up by through and out of play all the other baseball is later on San Diego's in Milwaukee the Giants are in Arizona that's a very big series for the Diamondbacks they're seven and a half games back four games under 500 out west the Giants are without Ray Durham he backs Still without the big units. Keep your eye on the Dodgers because with Durham going down and the Giants cooling off, the Dodgers three and a half games back and they've won four in a row. Drew down on strikes. Sombrano has three of those and Pujols bats with the bases empty. 
Big ball game in the American League tonight takes place in Fenway Park. The Yankees and the Red Sox are in a flat-footed tie at 27 and 16. Well, the Red Sox are going to see Roger Clemens both in Boston and in New York. He has a chance to win his 299th and then his 300th both against his former team if he wins two games, which is, I would think, a tall order. Let's hope he gets to 300 before the Yankees come to Chicago to take on the Cubs at Wrigley Field. One ball, one strike to Pujols. Out of play. He's got him set up at one and two. Well, I'm certainly looking forward to that, as are a whole lot of people around Chicago. They haven't been there since 1938 on the north side. It's going to be quite a series, the 6th, 7th, and 8th of June. Foul pass to Kendo, the fine Cardinal third base coach. One ball, two strikes. The reason why the Cubs have a two and a half game lead, Kevin Millwood threw a gem at Houston last night. As Philadelphia defeated the Astros, Millwood went the distance. What an acquisition he's become. They acquired their number one starter. He might have been Atlanta's number three, but for Philadelphia, he tops the rotation. And I believe that win pushed him to six and one. Pretty good. Two and two. Did he go? Yes, he, yes, did. he did. Pujols down on strikes. And a one, two, three, fifth for Zambrano, who will try to even the score himself, leading off our sixth inning. Cubs baseball is brought to you in part by Larry Roche Family Auto Group, serving Chicagoland since 1923. Monday, May 26th, will be Blue Blocker Day at Wrigley Field. The first 15,000 fans who enter the ballpark get a coupon for a free pair of blue blockers redeemable at Walgreens. Come on out and watch the Cubs. They'll take on the Pirates at 120. For tickets, call 800-THE-CUBS or visit Cubs.com. zambrano has been a pretty good hitter this year. Not exactly from the left side, however, where he's a little weaker than he is from his natural right side. Twice. The sky is starting to get a little overcast. There is some rain expected, but it's going to be later in the day. Carlos laid off. One ball, two strikes. No make update for the game in hand between the Cubs and Cardinals. Rained out on Mother's Day in Chicago or winded out, whatever you want to call it. Zambrano inside out swing just missed an extra base hit. Well that's going to be I think the only chance he's going to get to get a hit. And unfortunately with Mark Wagner on the call that one just missed. Inside out takes it right down the line. It looked like it's going to be two bases for an instant. But unfortunately it just slices foul. That would have been a great way to start. But now at one and two, you figure that Carlos will be overmatched by a very tough Matt Morris. One ball, two strikes. Tomorrow's pitching matchup in Pittsburgh, also here on Fox at six o'clock. Kerry Wood and Jeff D'Amico. And down goes Zambrano. Six Morris strikeouts in the game. Kerry Wood coming off a scintillating performance in Milwaukee, and Jeff D'Amico, big right hander that's given the Cubs trouble in years past. Big curveball. Grozelanik has had no luck the last couple of days for a very simple reason. He's hit everything to the left side of the infield. If he's going to get the job done, it'll be to right and right center. Which is where he scorches that ball, and Drew can't get it. It'll one-hop the fence. Mark around first on his way to second as Edmonds gets the ball back to the infield. Tying run in scoring position with the two and three hitters up. In our sixth inning. Mark hit that one awfully hard. He got the fastball he was looking for. He didn't roll over the top, and it turns into two. So the Cubs have the tying run on. And they will move to... 
the middle of the order. Gonzalez very similar in that he's been swinging early in the count. And the Cardinals have been taking advantage of that. Let's see if Alex could go the other way with the pitch here. Hit a line drive someplace. First pitch cutting and fouling it straight back. Alex, Getting a little darker here at the ballpark, by the way. Well, Alex wants to get in a situation before they're able to wipe him out with the curveball to be able to put the ball in play. They're giving him all the left center field. Vina was on the move, breaking toward the second base bag. Morris didn't see it. Well, I, Vina knew he was going inside, Chip, and he just wanted to get Brazilonic to start back to second base. That's the difference between having a man score and cutting down a man at the plate. There's a very good arm in right field and a very good arm in center. 1-1 one, one pitch. Didn't get the call. Two balls and a strike. Still have to figure you're going to challenge Pujols if it's hit to left field. Got to make him prove that elbow's 100%. Well, he's also fairly shallow in left. And he doesn't go back quite as well. Breaking ball. Fouled away. At two and two, you would think Matheny would call the curve. Now, Alex can't look for it. That's why he's got to try to hit this ball to the right side so you wait back. That way you can take the fastball to the right side and hit the curveball if it comes. Ground ball right to Vina. Runner will move to third. It costs the Cubs a second precious out. And Corey Patterson with Alu on deck is the hitter. He's been one of the hottest for the Cubs. Let's see what Tony La Russa has in mind here with two out. If he trusted Matt Morris to pitch to Baco with the tying run on in the fifth inning, he's certainly going to trust him to pitch to Corey, you would think. Will he give him anything that he can pull? That will be the answer to do they have the leader is it tied? Swing and a drive. Belt it deep toward right field. Back goes Drew at the wall. He's got it. Corey hit it a ton, but flies to right. Cubs starting to dial in Morris, who smiles as he knows he got away with a pitch. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Still 1-0 St. Louis. After our game, it's Fifth Third Bank Cubs post. Get all the highlights and analysis of today's game with Gail Fisher and Dave Otto. Don't miss Fifth Third Bank Cubs post immediately after the game on Fox Sports Network. Jim Edmonds leads off the sixth. He's 0 for 2. 1 to nothing. The Cardinals have the lead. Check swing roller. Look at Edmonds. Does a 360 spin in the batter's box before heading to first. That's a frustrated man. Carlos Zambrano has been very good here today. Unfortunately, the one run was as a result of his air. But when you look at Edmonds and how frustrated he is, there's not much you can do here. When you're in a slump, it seems like the bat is attracted to the ball wherever it is. And for Edmonds, it hasn't been hitting anything to the outfield. Roland extended his hitting streak to 13 games with a fourth inning single. Cardinals left him loaded in the fourth in a one run game. Let's see if that proves beneficial for the Cubs today. Strike two at the knees. Carlos has just a tremendous sinker. He's got great life on his fastball. More times than not, he doesn't need too many different pitches. He just has to throw it in the zone. Baco knows that and really doesn't get too fancy with him. This isn't the guy who's going to finesse you. This is a guy that's going to come right at you and let you pound it into the ground. And Chip, if you were des to design an ideal pitcher for Wrigley Field, sure, you'd like to have the stuff of Kerry Wood or Mark Pryor. Most guys don't and never will. But Carlos Zambrano is a typical Wrigley Field pitcher. He's going to throw lots of ground balls. That one hit in the air to center field pretty deep. Back goes Corey Patterson at the edge of the track. Park big enough to hold that drive. There are two men out. What's amazing about Zambrano, you look at his professional career. He's given up a grand total of. Thirty seven home runs. 
since 1998. That's it. You can't hit the ball in the air very much. Hot shot off Grunzelonic's glove into short right field. Renteria, another two hit game. 21 of those for the Cardinals shortstop on the season. Renteria has always hit Zambrano well, so today is no surprise. And it's going to be no surprise after this great effort by Grunzelonic. But if you're looking for a situation to run, this is the situation for Tony La Russa. In just 23 stolen base attempts. But Renteria has got to be going in this sequence. They sent the runners when Martino was, was up last time. More because Carlos didn't pay attention to the men at first and second. And Tino grounded out. Takes a quick strike at nothing and one. Many times you won't run on the first or second pitch because you're looking for the pitch out. Power numbers doubled for Martinez a year ago. That's what we were talking about earlier. Renteria was leading, and he just did get back. Well, he was going that time. And fortunately, Zambrano, who learned something in that other situation, held on to the ball and almost picked him off. I can guarantee you Larry Rothschild told Zambrano, vary your timing to first base. Hold the ball. He was real lucky to get out of this one without getting picked off. One strike to Martinez, runner not going, and a slow ground ball to Grudzelotic. He'll flip the first in time, and the Cardinals are done in the sixth. Real good pitchers duel again in St. Louis. The Cubs bats need a run to tie it after six. Super pitching duel continues here in St. Louis. It's a one to nothing Cardinal lead after six innings. Matt Morris and Carlos Zambrano hooking up in a gem. And uh, pretty easy to sum up this broadcast today. This is a play that could have been made but wasn't. That led to the one run. Corey Patterson has extended his hitting streak to 11. Scott Rowland, his hitting streak at 13. And an excellent job of pitching by both Morris and Zambrano. Now, Moises Alou has always hit Morris well, today being the exception. But when you know you can hit a guy, and I think that Alou feels that he can hit Morris, this should be a pretty good at bat. I talked with him before the game, and he said, I don't hit his hanging curveball well. I hit other things real well. First pitch swinging, bounces it to Roland. Long throw across the diamond. Philosophy must be pick on the first pitch for Morris. Hasn't worked too well for Alou today. He's retired and is 0 for 3. Here's O'Leary. Ten ground balls so far with one out here in the seventh inning. And six strikeouts. Easy afternoon for the outfield for St. Louis to this point. First pitch swinging. Martinez to his right. You beat it on the ground. You're beating yourself. Two out on two pitches. Well, he stopped Joy has got to take a pitch here. In fact if it's not a strike you take it until you get a strike. I know it's a one run game and you know that he sub Troy has the ability to take it out of the ballpark but the last thing you want to see is a three pitch inning in the seventh and you know Morris knows that he might throw one right down the middle well, he's going to throw it on the outside corner I think on the first pitch be it fastball or curve I'm thinking heater one ball no strikes that went a little low. One nothing Cardinals. They've out hit the Cubs 5 4. The only error, very costly today. And that's the pitch in this series that the Cardinals have exploited. They're throwing that curveball low and in. And again, he didn't take a strike. It would be 2 0 right now. A great hitter's pitch. Cardinal pitchers have made it a very tough series on Choi. This is what's going to happen to this youngster at times. But then again, he's going to come back, figure it out, and he's going to make a lot of these pitchers pay. He missed with the straight change. You would think that curveball low and in would be forthcoming. We'll take a look at what Matheny has to call. The 2 2. And the count now full with Lenny Harris waiting. 
You'd love to see Choi keep the inning alive because Harris has always hit Morris well. Cubs make just two trips to St. Louis this year. That's never a bad thing. Back here, August 26th, 27th, and 28th. Breaking ball popped up left side, twisting foul. Oh, and by the way, Matt Morris has given up nine home runs this year. And what happens late to a lot of guys that use that curveball? It flattens out just a touch. And that's when you give up the home run. Fastball at Choi. Fired off. This is a good at bat for Choi. He's fouled off. Couple of breaking balls and a fastball. Not that time, though. Morris has his seventh strikeout. Time to stretch in St. Louis. It's one to nothing, Cardinals. Super Bowl game. The only thing missing is a Cub lead. Steve Stone, Chip Carey back at Bush Stadium. It's one nothing as Morris and Sombrano dueling again in their second head-to-head -head matchup this year. Matt Morris has been awfully tough, but so has Carlos Zambrano. Unfortunately, his own defense has come back to haunt him. But you figure you have to score anyway. You might as well take advantage of it. With the bottom part of the order here due up for the Cardinals, Zambrano's got to get him out and turn it over to the offense, and maybe they can get in that bullpen. They're starting to stir in the Cardinal pen. But you got to figure Morris is going to go for a while here. He's got a one run lead with Matheny leading off. We're in the seventh inning already. Matheny is singled, scored, and walked today. Soprano has walked a pair of men. Morris hasn't walked a soul. And some shaved ice would be nice today. It's a sticky afternoon in St. Louis. High pop right side over the Cardinal dugout. And it's strike two to the St. Louis catcher. What's important about this inning is you want to make it happen one, two, three, because you don't want to bring Drew and perhaps Pujols to bat. Although Zambrano has zipped through this lineup, there's a lot of thunder in the middle. If you can get out one, two, three, then you have Drew leading off next inning. Two balls, two strikes to Matheny. Three in Pittsburgh, then three in Houston. And then home finally, Monday the 26th. A tapper foul at the plate, but Feeney will do it again. Cubs enter play today. Two and a half in front of Houston, three ahead of the Cardinals, three and a half in front of Cincinnati. There you see the upcoming TV schedule, and the Cubs will be very happy to leave this ballpark. They're 4 and 22 here since the year 2000. This has been a tough place to win. They have, however, in this series, played much better baseball in these first four games in St. Louis than they have maybe in the past three years here. Well, there's no doubt about the fact that they've neutralized a lot of this very potent Cardinal offense. That's not a good start. Matheny walks, and it sets up a very similar situation that we saw in our third inning. That is when Matheny singled, Morris tried to sacrifice, and Carlos threw the ball into center field. Right at the 99 pitch mark. So let's see what Morris has in mind. He butts again, and it's perfect. Choi will handle and apply the tag. Morris did his job. Second sacrifice of the day, an insurance run at second, and the top of the order coming up. Remember earlier in the game, Zambrano had a sacrifice opportunity, and he struck out. 
we've talked about the things you've got to do if you're going to win in the National League. It would help if you could hit, but it's not mandatory. Bunting is, fielding is, holding base runners close, and the ability to throw to bases on pickoffs. If you can do that, you'll win an extra two or three games a year. Seven of Vina's 18 runs batted in this year have come against the Cubs. So beware here. One ball, no strikes to Vina. Who's hit safely in seven consecutive games, but today has yet to hit the ball out of the infield. We're going to see another real pesky leadoff hitter in Pittsburgh and Kenny Lofton. And also down in Houston with Greg Vigio. Ryan Giles is also back for the Pirates, so they give you a different look. You just assume with Vini here and have him hit the ball to left field. To do that, you have to throw the ball away. You've got Matheny at second. He doesn't have great speed. Ground ball up the middle. Grunzelanek to his right. Off balance flip. Takes care of Vina. Runner to third with two out. Ground ball after ground ball. The story in this game for both right-handed pitchers. Well, this is what you didn't want to see happen, and the leadoff walk necessitated that to get out of the inning, you have to get by J.D. Drew. This one up the middle, good play by Grozelanek, who's been very solid at second base defensively. A sinker misses to Drew, who's doubled, walked, and struck out. Purdue, it's for Drew, it's great protection with Pujols behind him. Albert, one of the best in baseball. Popped him up. Left field, Alu is there. And the Cardinals strand yet another base runner. They've stranded seven through seven and lead by only a run. Our Penzo protection play of the game. And it comes courtesy of Troy O'Leary. O'Leary goes into the corner. And without regard for life or limb, Pulls it in off the bat of Edgar Renteria. So Troy O'Leary, our Penzo protection play of the game. Lots of Cubs fans here in St. Louis. And uh, for baseball purists who enjoy good pitching, they have seen plenty of it. With Mark Pryor winning Saturday. Zabrano throwing the ball exceptionally well today. Matt Morris for the Cardinals. Todd Wellmeyer came out of the bullpen in the series opener and threw two scoreless innings. So in the arms race, this has been a real fun, fun baseball weekend. Now the bats got to do something, and that's a great play at third by Roland. Best defense in baseball. You're seeing it in St. Louis, and there's another example. One out. In close games, this defense is going to be your best friend if you're on the hill. This might have been a double instead. It's a line out. And that completely changes the complexion of the inning. Roland has been magnificent. They knew that when he came over. And bear in mind, he came over from an artificial surf field surface. He's better here. Baco will hit. Let's see who comes out to pinch it for Zambrano. Well, it's going to be Zambrano in the on deck circle, but he's not going to hit. It will depend on. What happens with Paul Baca and Farnsworth throwing in the pen? One ball, one strike. Baca's Baco. Been, been a tough out today. He's got one of the Cubs' four hits. Cubs have left three on base. One man at second, one man at third today. And nobody at all up in the bullpen as of yet for the Cardinals. Make that two men at second, one man at third for the Cubs. And Morris giving him exactly what they want. This could be his third complete game of the season already for St. Louis. Cubs could use a walk here. Baco in the driver's seat. 
Fouls it away. Full count three and two. One of the reasons why it's still a one to nothing game. Matt Morris has yet to walk a Cub. Breaking ball, fly ball down the right field line, but he yanked it foul. Home run distance. And Bonko does it again. Fly ball, shallow right. Drew coming on, still coming, slowing. Makes the catch. Hung up in the air for him easily. And it's six straight retired. Base is clear in the eighth inning. Tom Goodwin. And it will be Goodwin in the eighth. And you would think that they would be in at the corners thinking that Goodwin just might be bunting. Carlos Zambrano, seven innings. Five hits. One run unearned. He walked three. Struck out four. And all he can do is rue what could have been were it not for the third inning throwing air. Tom Goodwin, four for six lifetime against Matt Morris. That's probably why he leads the parade off the bench. Look at the way they defend him with Morris throwing breaking balls. They've got Edmonds in left center field. I mean, he can send it to the right center field gap on a line. If the ball sticks on that track, Goodwin's going to be at third base. I think if he just hits it to right center, he'll be in third base. As shallow as Edmonds in, you see where they play him defensively. Two balls, one strike. Cubs need a run to tie late in St. Louis. <laughs> Morris doesn't mess around on the mound. He gets it and throws it. A la Bob Gibson. In the glory days with the Cardinals. Fly ball, right center field. Drew on the run. Still going, still going. He's got it. Good one. He hit a rocket to right center, but the trajectory allowed J.D. Drew to catch up to it, and the Cubs are done in the eighth. Gail Fisher here in the Fox Sports Net studios with this in-game update, and we're looking ahead to tonight, the White Sox hosting the Toronto Blue Jays. The Blue Jays on a three-game win streak. Now the White Sox just got swept by the Twins, so the South Side is looking to turn things around tonight at U.S. Cellular Field. And Chip and Steve, everyone can come back later and catch that game right here on Fox Sports Net. Should be a fun night for baseball down at the cell here in St. Louis. Kyle Farnsworth takes over for the Cubs, coming off a very, very impressive performance in the 17-inning game up in Milwaukee the other day. He doesn't have to worry about going three here today. He just has to go one. Kyle, 2 0, oh, the ERA of fine 237 on for the 21st time. Just 11 hits in 19 innings. He, however, has to go through the heart of the order for St. Louis, an order that has pretty much plagued him in years past. Who holds Edmonds and Roland? The trio. That Farnsworth will face. Don't forget when we get back home Friday, May 30th, the first 10,000 fans at the ballpark will get a collectible scratch off card. You might win an authentic Rawlings autographed baseball signed by Jody Davis. Giveaway sponsored by Pepsi and the Museum of Science and Industry. Log on to Cubs.com for more information. Cubs will take on Houston. That's a 220 start. And there are good tickets available. Eighth inning, Pujols is 0 for 3. Cardinals with a 1-0 advantage. All of last year, Matt Morris completed one game. This year, the Cardinals have completed three, and Morris has completed two of them. The chippy boy, you would think that Tony La Russa would give him every opportunity to complete this one with what has been a struggling bullpen. Well, he's been their horse. He's their ace, number one. Number two, the bullpen situation. And number three, if Morris gets the win, he doesn't have to go in the pen, and that draws him a day closer to when they might get Isringhausen back. And Pujols quickly down, nothing in two. Kyle has sharpened up his slider substantially. And there's a look at the answer to the question for the Cardinals. Where will they finish this year? 
and it probably lies in the hands of Isringhouses. And, and will he come back the first week or perhaps the second week of June if he comes back entirely healthy? And they were encouraged by the way he threw in this series in the pin. They would be awfully happy. One and two to Pujols. Fly ball, belted deep left field. It's two nothing. Kyle decided not to go with the slider. He thought he could get that fastball by Albert Pujols. Something that for two and a half years the National League has been unable to do. Second home run for Pujols in seven at bats against Farnsworth. St. Louis with a huge insurance run leads it by two. And now here's Jim Edmonds. He's 0 for 3 today and has just two hits in his last 25 at bats. And the Cardinals in this series have really waited around and allowed the Cubs to beat themselves. This ball hit a long way and Farnsworth kept going fastball after fastball thinking that he could jam him. Apparently he wasn't watching the Mark Pryor game when they tried to do the same thing with him and Mark Pryor said I thought I could get the ball inside I couldn't that was the lone run Pryor gave up and the man you're looking at is one of the best in both leagues and has as quick a hands as anybody. One ball two strikes to Jim Edmonds so in the ninth inning Cubs now need two to tie. They will have the top of the order up. Against Matt Morris. The Cardinal bullpen. Just. Catching rays out there and right. Top of the order due up to lead off the ninth inning for the Cubs. Keeps it alive. One for 14 in the series is the Cardinal center fielder. Well, this has been a pretty well attended series. A lot more red in the stands today than has been present for the previous three games. There's been a lot of Cub fans come down here. Missed the corner. Full count. Drive right center field. Patterson cuts it off. And Jim Edmonds aboard. Edmonds now three for six against Farnsworth. Here's Scott Rowland. We told you when this inning started that this lineup has tormented Farnsworth. And through two of the hitters, nothing's changed. That time, Kyle got the ball down, something Edmonds been looking for the entire series, but hasn't gotten a whole lot of. So he now pitches he against the hottest of the Cardinals. I was going to say he pitches against the pattern that's been so successful and sure enough Edmonds breaks out. Here's Roland. He's one for three. One ball no strikes to the Cardinal third baseman. Roland one for five against Kyle. The last hit however was a home run. St. Louis to the Cubs nothing and the bullpen up and working Mike Remlinger is up. Line drive over first but foul. Houston is off Pirates are off today. Those are the other teams along with Cincinnati chasing the Cubs. In the division.
They stand to gain some ground without having to compete this afternoon or this evening. One and two, your count to Roland. It's even at two balls, two strikes. Worst case scenario for the Cubs, they'll still have a fairly decent lead heading into Pittsburgh when St. Louis and Houston go head to head. It's a chance to gain ground on someone. Two and two. It's another full count. This time to Roland with Edgar Renteria waiting on deck. He's four for nine against Kyle. He's got a little of a Mike Fetters act going out there, doesn't he? <laughs> Runner at first goes. The pitch is ball four. Uh, how about the appeal? He got him. Yeah, on the appeal and out it's tagged a play. is the double play call by Edmonds. Now Edmonds was looking in at the home plate umpire to say, hey. It doesn't really matter. Why? He can't umpire. Well, that's right. Why is he looking there? He should be looking at the bag. It's exactly right. You slide into the bag. The appeal was made to first. Edmonds pulled up. It's a strike him out, throw him out. And Tony can complain till the cows come home. This is going to hold up. And Tony tell Jim Edmonds not to umpire. He knows that Edmonds There's no made doubt a mistake. About it. The appeal to Chuck Merriweather. He says he went around, and fortunately, Paul Bacco continued the play. Edmonds just stands up. And then the second base umpire, Hollowell, looks in, makes sure it's not ball four, calls him out, and Edmonds looks in at the umpire. And that's what he's saying to his teammates. But, Jim, the umpires are paid to umpire. If you slide at second base, you're in safely, and there's no double play. That's Edmonds' fault, not the umpire's. So new life for Farnsworth. Bases are erased with Renteria up. A two for three day for him. Jim Edmonds is a great player, but he leads the league in whining. It's amazing. <laughs> well, if he's not the league leader, he's in the top two. One ball, no strikes. Round ball to the shortstop in the hole. Alex sets and fires. Farnsworth gives up the home run to Pools. Cubs need two to tie as we head to the ninth here in St. Louis. The mighty Mississippi in St. Louis. And the ninth inning underway as Morris drops a quick strike into Mark Grunzelani. Cubs need two to tie. First, Mark didn't think much of that call. First, they need a base runner, something that's been very difficult to come by today. The Cardinals don't make any errors. They've given up four hits, and Morris hasn't walked anybody. Consequently, four base runners. One thing Mark has not done much of is expand his strike zone as Eldred and Facero loosen up just in case in the St. Louis pen. The ever-present Cal Eldred, who has made the conversion after four arm surgeries to trying to close not an easy thing to do but he's doing a good job in well, between, innings, past first. between innings Jim Edmonds stopped and talked with Chuck Merriweather who said look here's the difference Jim you get to sit down between innings wear white and make a lot of money I wear blue because I umpire if you stop umpiring it wouldn't have been a double play it's very simple one and two Breaking ball rolled to the left side. Roland snags it. Throws the strike. One away. Nine straight. Retired by Morris. Well, eventually they'll make some mistakes defensively, but we haven't seen it. They haven't made an error, Steve, since the 8th of May. With Morris having the Cubs pound the ball into the ground and with this kind of defense, Sometimes you just don't get many opportunities to score, and when you do, you have to take advantage of it. Cubs got a two-out double in the first. They got a leadoff single in the third. Couldn't bunt the man over, then hit into a double play. A two-out double in the fifth, a one-out double in the sixth. That is it. Just four hits. Well, there's one of the keys, Chip. You get the leadoff base hit in the second. You fail to execute, right. then ground into the double play. The Cardinals have not failed to execute at anything today. And, and they were trying to give the Cubs an out in the third. Carlos 
made an ill-advised throw that ended up in center field. And on a St. Louis double play ball, they scored their first unearned run of the day. So again, we've said it before. We said it on Friday in a series of what some feel are two pretty evenly matched ball clubs. The team that makes the fewest mistakes is the team that's going to have the better series. And that team, unfortunately, has been the Cardinals to this point. You would love to get Gonzalez on because then Patterson, who's hit the ball very well today, one of the few Cubs to do that, would represent the tying run. Three balls, two strikes. Well, he's thrown two curveballs in a row, so you figure a fastball outside would be forthcoming. He doesn't want to walk Gonzalez, but he wants to try to force him to pull it. That's the curveball again. He hung it, and he took it for strike three. Two outs in the night. Eight strikeouts for Morris. Well, that ball came in and it was up and out of the strike zone. But Morris has shown all day long that he can throw the curveball for a strike. He gets the benefit of the call. Big crowd on its feet as Patterson fouls it away. The Cardinals are one out away from creeping a game closer in the Central. St. Louis would pull to within two. They'd be tied with the Astros, their opponent next. The Reds would be three games back. Fly ball hit to left. Pujols is there, and Matt Morris has his third complete game of the win, or of the year, a 2 0 win. An honored run early set the tone, and then a long home run from Pujols in the eighth. Steve put it out of reach. Well, a combination of too much Matt Morris, certainly too much of the defense, and just enough timely hitting, and the Cubs lose three of four, but they're guaranteed to go on to Pittsburgh with a two game lead in the Central. Maybe better luck with the Pirates, who are not near as good as these hated Redbirds. So don't get your dauber down. Still a five and three trip with three coming up in Pittsburgh. Wood, Clement, and Pryor to face the Pirates. As the Cardinals take three of four in St. Louis, Gale and Dave, two nothing, today's final score. Chip, what a game it was and what a series. We're going to break down the entire series from the weekend because it was critical, not the result the Cubs wanted, but we'll take a look back. Plus, Dave will break down the details of this game, and we will preview tomorrow's game as the Cubs head to Pittsburgh. For now, though, let's send it back to Chip. Morris Gale, the winner. He's now 5-3 and three with his third complete game of the season. Carlos Sombrano dug his own grave with an unearned run today. He falls to four and four, a very briskly played game, just over two hours today. And we head to Pittsburgh for a three-game series with a five and three road trip. Final score, St. Louis two, Cubs nothing for Steve Stone and our entire crew, Chip Carey from Butch Stadium. Inviting you to stay tuned. The Fifth Third Bank Cubs postgame show is coming up next.